Okay, hi everyone. Uh, Andy Muir here, co-founder of Coach Logic, joined by Richard Demain Griffiths, who is director of sport yeah. at Bishop Wordsworth School. How are you, Richard? Yeah, good. Thank you. Good. Good. So, um, yeah. So, Richard obviously recently uh, got involved in, in using Coach Logic in the in the last couple of months. So, we just thought a uh, good opportunity to find out a little bit more about the school. Uh, which we'll go into in a second, and also you know the program there and and how um, they've already been using Coach Logic and and some of the plans for the for the future as well. So, all sound good to you? Uh, cool. cool. So, yep. Yeah. Good. Good. Awesome. So, uh, <laughs> so, so, Richard, um, do you want to just kick off a little bit? Obviously, about tell us a little bit about the school. Sure. Yeah. So we're state uh, state grammar school in Salisbury. Uh, get mistaken for independent school quite a lot but um yeah state school in Salisbury we've got roughly 800 boys in the main school and then as of this September uh, we've got girls coming into the sick form which is um, pretty exciting it's going to add a new new dynamic um, across our main sports we're sort of competitive nationally um, I guess traditionally we're known for rugby uh, mostly but certainly the other sports are pushing on as well um, and with the girls coming in, I'd hope hope they'd also be kicking on um, to challenge at the top. Um, with the growing school, we've got increased number of staff. So we've got a fifth member of staff coming in, plus we've got a place for two two gap assistants. Um, so we've got a growing department, which is which is pretty cool. Um, and then, although I'm director of sport, I guess we all all the staff are, are PE teachers. We we work from. Uh, the very bottom in terms of developing people all the way to the very the very top so um, it's got to be a like I say a culture of opportunity and enjoyment for everybody um, working towards getting better whether it's a participation or, or performance level um, and then I guess where coach logic comes in for us um, previously I've kind of like I've, I've seen the coach logic tent at Roslyn Park um, and if I'm honest I've I've kind of scooted past it because I was like oh we could never we can never afford that um, it's not really for us um but with the 100 day trial and then conversations with you guys um we've, we've really got into it and and in discussions with the department and the the senior players um and we do think it's it's really worthwhile and it is cost effective and i've i've underlined the word anywhere there because for us without being a boarding school um the ability for the boys to be able to review footage and and have active conversations and stuff whether they're at home or commuting um is a pretty cool opportunity because we've got like a remote desktop but if you try and watch video through it it will it will be slow and it will stagger and, and stuff so um the fact that we could do this anywhere um is is pretty exciting um and and that's uh, that's one of the, the best things about it i think i think for us it gives access um and then again talking to you guys we've talked about doing it for academic p as well which again I think any P teacher out there who has to do video footage um, and moderation and stuff through video, it's one of the biggest um, pains trying to collate all that information and put it all together. So the fact that the boys or the students can um, clip themselves and make their own playlists and things like that, um, and then we can ongoing um, look at it and review it and talk it through with them, not just from a performance, but like just physically putting the information together and then we can hand that all over in terms of moderation i think is going to make everyone's lives and the process a lot a lot easier so um it, it's brilliant from a academic point of view to a sports performance point of view um yeah we're pretty excited to um to yeah to be involved with coach logic um yeah so that's kind of the background to the school yes yeah, could you hear what about um a little bit about your, yourself then richard how did you end up um, at the school and different things along the way. Sorry, I lost you there. How did I end up at the school? Yeah, how did you end up at the school and uh, what you've been doing before? <laughs> a bit back so it's, it's, uh, it's my old school, so I've gone full circle. Um, so I've been at the school teaching now for 10 years. Um, when I finished at the school, um, I went back every summer and helped coach. I knew that I wanted to teach or coach, so I sort of stayed involved with the school and, and the rugby programme there. Um, I disappeared off to off to the northeast, up to Durham for four years. Um, had two years at a local mixed comprehensive, and then an opportunity came up at Bishops, and 
couldn't really turn it down. So I, I came back straight away. Um, and it was actually on a course, I was on a course and I managed to share a taxi with Stuart Lancaster. And we were talking about, um, or he'd been talking about sort of the next level and what we could do and, and how the best tool in terms of coaching. And it was he who said about video analysis and um, being able to review stuff. So we managed to get a camera. We found some money to get a camera. Um, and then I guess this is the next next stage in that, being able to sort of clip and analyse the footage properly. Um, so, yeah, that's how I've, how I've ended up where I am. <laughs> I'm due to say taxi share. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's good. Okay, so yeah, cool, interesting. So, do you want to um, tell us a little bit then? Obviously, you hadn't used Coach Logic before, so if people are watching this back, maybe further down the road, we're still kind of coming out of lockdown, I guess. Yeah. Um, kids starting to be back at school and places and what have you. But um, yeah, do you want to tell us a little bit about you know what's what's been going on at the school and how you've been how you've been using Coach Logic, how you've been supporting the players in general as well. Yeah, so I guess when we signed up to the trial initially, um, it was kind of it, like we had a play around with it. It wasn't necessarily at the forefront. It was constantly sort of in the back burner and we kind of, everyone was sort of getting around how to operate in lockdown as well as um, kind of watch all the various webinars and things that was on. So um, it was, it's something that has sort of been bubbling along the background. And I guess in the last two or three weeks I've, I've found the time to really get into it and, and get my head around how best to use it. Um, and then that's sort of the journey we started on. So um, the first thing that we sort of did was we worked out how we wanted to clip, um, which was a real sort of trial and error process. And I think looking back on it, we, we had too many, we had too much, basically there wasn't, there wasn't clarity in what we were trying to do. Um, so we we stripped it back so that they, you had that kind of clarity of what you're looking at. And it was just a lot simpler for the for the players. So we just stripped it back to six main things: um, our attack and defence, our kicking game, uh, lineouts and scrum, and then sort of opposition highlights of when they were when they were doing things. So um, we had continuity, for example, originally but it just got a bit messy and the boys didn't quite know what continuity was, is it, you know, and so you kind of got lost in it. So yeah, we stripped it back to just attack and defense, um, which is nice and easy to follow. Um, and then as well as that, having looked at your other case studies that you've done with the other schools um, and looking at the little sort of tutorials you guys have put up, um, we, we started specifying who we were directing questioning at. So you can see on this one, this one's at Charles talking about who's outside him on the carry just to get him thinking. And then those directed questions have then sparked conversation with certain people. So Tom's the guy receiving the kick in that clip there. Um, so I posed a question to him. We had a little conversation about it. And then we brought the rest of the backs in to talk about how we could help him out maybe. So... Um, I think it was Stuart Melville College, they talked about less is more um, and direct, making it more personal. So uh, that really resonated with me. And I think it's, it's made my direction of how I use it a lot, a lot better and a lot clearer for the boys. Um, I guess, so just to quickly jump in, Richard, I guess the, you've got a, f a framework there for them for things to look at, but there's a lot of freedom within that that hopefully then allows for a lot of I guess, discovery from the players and, and from you off the back of that as well? Yeah, so uh, I try and everything I try and put is a question. So I try not to direct uh, as much as possible uh, and just try and leave it as open as possible so we can yeah stimulate a conversation. Um, I really enjoyed the process of actually going back over our games and things. Cause if I'm honest, I haven't, I mean, I haven't spent as much time sort of pouring into the games as I have now, partly because I've, I've got the ability now to, you know, pause, speed it up, slow it down um, and think about the questions I'm looking at. And what's really cool, some of the boys have come, but one of them um, in particular came back with a huge in-depth analysis of this one particular moment in a game. And he saw it from a completely different point of view to me, um, which was brilliant. And that stimulated a whole nother conversation. Um, so yeah, and it's something that I've got lowered down in terms of how we can be better. I'm interested in how the how I could be better at asking questions 
and, and drawing that information out. Um, so that's a real work on for me um, in, in going forward, certainly. Um, so yeah, so then I realized that quite a lot of what I was doing was, was generally work ons. Um, not like we don't like to call them negatives, but things that we could do better. So um, I've started to think about how we can make it more engaging um, and also learning from what our opposition are doing to us. You know, we end up playing some of the top, top schools, some of the, the best young talent going, you know, there's England internationals and academy players in there. So there's some good people to learn from at either under 18 level. So we started talking about, so this one was just about, um, in our in the Seaford game, they, they had a 12 who cut a great line back against the grain, hit a soft shoulder and made some brilliant yards. And although it's frustrating for us and it's a work on for us to not let that happen, actually, where, where's he coming from? How's he made that happen? Um, and it just so happened that Caleb Clark in the Super Rugby at the weekend did exactly the same thing, um, scoring a great try. So I, I added that video just to show, kind of show it. Um, and I think one of the boys is going to take it on as a, as a playlist work on to look at different lines and where people are starting, where they're coming from um, to share and, and see how we can be more effective in that. Okay. So it's almost literally, if I've got that right, almost turning defence into attack, you know? So. Yeah, 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 definitely. You know, I, you know, I, I'd, I'd pride ourselves on our defence, um, but we don't always get it right. And if someone beats it, they've done something to beat it generally right so what are they doing how can we learn from it um yeah for sure um so then in, in that vein i guess in terms of not just focus on work ons i wanted to look at positive things as well so um at the start of lockdown halfway through and i'll do it again once we get into summer i had all the boys come up with their like idps and a review of the season and everything um and i'd literally had a conversation with with this lad alex um and I, I happen to find a clip of him doing what I wanted him to be doing coming into next year. He wasn't necessarily doing this consistently, but it was a good clip of him showing great intent uh, defensively and then actually working really hard to get into the next next breakdown, which then forced an error from the from the opposition. So it was a focus again for me is to yeah find the good things that the boys are doing, the players are doing, and be able to clip that and show that to them as well. Um, not just pose pose problems. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I think there's. Um, I don't know if you've heard the phrase. I heard it from you know Damien Hughes, who's done like mm -hmm. the um, we've got the Barcelona away, etc. And saw him actually at the Padness yeah. conference, and he used a phrase called "success leaves clues." And I just thought like just a really good fit, you know, because it's. Yeah, like you say, going back, it's not always, you, you can't block out things, mistakes as such, but when you've done something well, and especially just as you said there, where uh, Alex, as you mentioned, he doesn't always do it consistently, but there'll be lots of things he will done, have done right during that moment that he can learn from. So that kind of success leaves clues is quite a powerful sentiment, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would have been a better title than positive as well as <laughs> problems. I'll, I'll nick that for next time. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so that was that was kind of where I'm at um, with the, the clipping and stuff, which then led us to sort of starting to make playlists. Um, so having a bit of a play around with that. So like I said, um, I've clipped some, so I started off the back of that thought, uh, some good examples of stuff that's going on. Um, the first one I had was the game review. So that was probably work ons. And then um, uh, the boys, I sort of asked them to, well, once they'd got their head around it, um, so the bottom left is Tom started making a kind of highlights reel for himself. A couple of the other boys are making a try lights. And then the best one for me so far is the middle top with the line outs. Um, Basti on his IDP, he wanted more of a leadership role or he wanted to be more of a leader and have a presence on the park. Um, and we were talking about how he could do this during lockdown. And so I suggested, well, look, why don't you start a line out um, playlist, you know, find our different line outs and put them all together so that the boys who are coming in the youngsters can start seeing how we're moving so he clipped all of them we pulled them all out and he's made a, a whole playlist and he's gone through and he's he started naming them all up so that the the youngsters before they come in they've got an idea of of what their role is in a, in a certain line out and 
and and that's the sort of vein that I want to start going down now that we've got our games most of them clipped from last year the boys can start uh, looking into them quizzing each other um, testing each other but also making making playlists of either work ons or, or positive things that, that's cool I like the, the fact that they're feeding that through to the younger age groups as such that are that are coming through and there's a there's an element of continuity isn't there as well and, and, and I'd imagine <clears throat> the first 15 the guy you know who there who's sort of wanting to lead the line out that's really positive that he wants to do that but then if he's then I guess engaging or sharing stuff to the younger age groups that'll be pretty impactful within that environment is that I mean it's maybe something difficult to see right now but you, you, you'd imagine it would be yeah it's funny isn't it you know a lot of people you know having listened to lots of the top people you know Ben Ryan talks about making himself redundant and I think that's a big a big part of what I'm trying to do and my message to the boys I've said throughout this this time and my leadership team know this that if I can have 20 coaches on the park and I know you guys had the uh, had the push to upscale upscale the coaches within the players so yeah if I've got boys that want to take on those roles that's why I want you know 15 20 problem solvers that can you know work things out for themselves but also then pass their knowledge on to the younger generation and we talked about um, yes, yeah, so I had a Zoom with all the boys yesterday about how we could use Coach Logic, and we talked about sharing our resources and ideas and stuff more on Coach Logic as opposed to um, like we have a, a big WhatsApp feed that, that everyone's on, where lots of stuff gets shared, but from one year to the next, that will get lost. Whereas if we can build up our resources on on Coach Logic instead, it's there from one year to the next to to see and use again and, and build on it. Um, so yeah, I, for me, that is the sort of pathway that I want to go down of the boys having the ownership or the players having the ownership. I've got, I've got to remember, I've got girls coming in. Um, the players having the ownership um, and, and building their own yeah, bank, of, bank of ideas. Yeah, it's cool. It's pretty, uh, it's quite exciting that, isn't it? I suppose when you've got that buy-in as well from the, from the students, you know, who yeah. I think speaking to various other people is, if you give if you give the players or the students in this well, I suppose they're both, but if you give them the the opportunity, they want they want to be involved, you know. Um, and the more opportunities you give them, the more they want to be involved, and the more benefit that you get from that as well. So it's it's exciting, yeah. exciting to see that. The the exciting thing for me is that you know we've we've achieved what we've achieved currently without actually all being together and having the conversation face to face. They've you know, we had the, we had a Zoom last night. I mean, I'm in conversation with them via our, our chat group and and email and stuff. But ultimately, it's all been done remotely, and they've worked it out, and which is cool. Whereas if we were in school, we'd probably be in breakout groups and having a chat about how we could best do it. So I'm excited that we've got this far already, having done it remotely, and what we can then once we get together and can collaborate face to face how we can then sort of push it on further. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really exciting. Cool, that's good, that's good, good to hear. Um, yeah, and then just the last bit from, from me was just sort of what I think we could do better already. So firstly, I realized that watching video and stuff isn't for everybody. So it's how we can engage beyond coach logic. Um, and like I said, I think once we're back in school, that'll be a lot easier because we can talk around it and have those, um, yeah, even in passing, just have those have those chats. I was going to use it, well, I'll use it. Casual collisions that uh, I know Google came up with in a, in a chat with Rusty about. So yeah, just in passing, we can talk about that stuff, which which I think will be cool for certain, certain players. Um, upskilling us. So like I said, we did the Zoom last night, which was, which was really cool. Um, and the boys gave me some feedback um, and we had a chat about that. And I said about them having a greater ownership. So yeah, off the back of that, we talked about different playlists that we could put together. Um, I think, um, I think it's the, one of the FA um, videos you've got, they said about making it exciting and engaging. So like I said, not just always posing problems, but positive things as well and, and different ways of engaging the, the students. So um I've learned masses from the stuff that, that you guys have posted. Um, 
boys have got some great ideas as well. I have no doubt as we go into the season and I talk about talk about it with other schools using the platform, uh, we'll pick up some ideas. But already, um, I think Joe March in, in a in a podcast he did, he talked about at the Blues, they have um, they come in in the mornings and they sit around iPads and while they're having breakfast, they actually review stuff and they're in little huddles, nothing organised, very casual, just talking through bits of video. And so it's got me thinking how I could do that with the boys. Um, I haven't got a room with a bank of iPads, unfortunately, but, you know, they could get their phone out and they could have a chat and sit around and, and just stimulate that conversation, um, be it at, at breakfast or lunch or whatever, um, which I think was quite a cool idea. Um, and then I talked about sort of buddy lights. The boys quite like that idea of um, highlighting someone else's good stuff so you could see their value they bring to the team, which I think maybe um mark did with with his team i think maybe he did something like that um and then like i said the big one for me is is how we use questioning and and post etiquette so um, what i mean by post etiquette is when we put stuff in the team room how we then communicate and the, the conversation you effectively have when you type a conversation as opposed to talking to somebody um because i think how the boys maybe talk in social media to each other is maybe not how i want them talking on on coach logic and so it's just making sure that we're communicating appropriately and getting our message across that we mean it to be as opposed to writing something that doesn't come across quite right and i think that's quite a like i said for me that's the big big work on going forward getting getting that line of communication right especially in the current time of being being remote um, and then, yeah, lastly, for me, it's exciting to be able to share and connect with other people. So I was lucky that I had two, two old boys came and coached for me this year. Um, one was the club captain at the local, local club, and he was first team captain a few years ago. And the other was his vice captain, but he's since gone on to play for Hong Kong. Um, and he was a fly half for Hong Kong. So he obviously had a wealth of knowledge um, that he brought in. But they're both, you know, they're working in London and stuff they can't always be here but it means i could send them video and they can then give me feedback and they can connect with the boys which um is pretty cool because it means i've got a i've got a vast array of experience to call upon even though it's not in the school with me i can um i can tap them up and get ideas off of them which um again is uh, is pretty exciting yeah i think that's uh, that, that i've heard a couple of examples that i like that as well where it's you've Actually, you mentioned Mark earlier, so he's he's coaching, you know, first 15 at club side, but he's, even himself as the head coach, he's, with running the business as well, he struggles for, for time to always be there. So it's great that he can, you know, have that sort of ability to either stay connected when he's under the pump a little bit, but also yeah. bring other coaches to add, um, add something to the group as well. So, and then it means that if those the two coaches that you mentioned are there, then they can actually add a lot more because they've been connected at the times when they weren't able to physically be there as well. Yeah. So that's, uh, yeah, th things like that I think are just, but that's, that, I think technology allows that and maybe, I don't know, maybe reflecting back, people will see that actually it's accelerated, not just a coach logic sense, but actually the impact that technology can have in terms of collaboration and adding value to real physical environments. Uh, yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, so and then you've got that last one of keep learning, keep getting better. Not not a bad one to to finish off on. Yeah, well, that's. I mean, you'll see at the top of our slides, better every day is kind of our 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 tagline that we sort of we've had to, we've had time to reflect, obviously in the, in lockdown, and we wanted something that uh, summed everything up from the whether you're at the, the bottom or the top. Um, yeah, striving to get better every day, whether you're a student or a member of staff. So yeah, um, and I think. This is a this is a great way of doing that. So, um, like I said, we've we're just at the start of our journey, and I think um, as time goes on, there'll be other things to learn and, and that we can prove upon for sure. Cool. Ideal, good way, good is finished better every day. So, uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> well uh, yeah, thanks very much for that, Richard. Appreciate uh, appreciate you taking the time to obviously share a bit about you know about the school and what you've been doing during lockdown, how you've been using Coach Logic, and, and looking forward how you will as well. So, um, yeah, really appreciate your time, and thanks very much. Yes, you're welcome. Thanks a lot.